Good morning, church family. I hope everyone's doing pretty good this morning. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but God is good again this week, like he was last week, like he was the week before, and like he always will be. And he deserves our praise. He deserves so much more than our praise. But let's give him what we can this morning. If you want to stand with us uh, as we get started. Hello, check. Hi, good morning. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Just got a couple announcements for you. Um, first and foremost, we're so happy you guys are here. For those of you watching online, uh, those of you that are here with us today, man, it's awesome. It's awesome to see you this morning. Um, so just a couple things for those of you that maybe this is your first time, maybe you don't know what these cards represent, I'm going to tell you about them. So first, we have this blue one. It's our welcome card. 
They're all in the back. This is just a way to, to get down your information. We'll reach out to you, maybe get you some coffee. We'll maybe figure that out. Give you a text, give you a call, something just to get to know who you are um, and for you to get a little bit more information about who we are, what we do here at Calvary Wellspring. The next card is this prayer card. We recommend everybody do this every week. We all are in need of a lot of prayer, right? We all have prayer requests every week. It seems like just constantly going, constantly changing. And we would love to be informed about ways that we could be praying for you, you and your family. Um, And the elder team usually gets together every week. And we would love to be able to pray for you for any prayer requests you have. And the last thing I'll just mention is this ministry card. This is a way to reach out if you would like to get more involved here at Calvary Wellspring, whether that's the greet team, worship team, with the sound, with the slides, anything of that nature. This is a way to reach out and get more information on that. Um, Other than that, I'll leave these here. I'm going to go ahead and pray for us this morning, um, and specifically just pray for our country, where it's at, um, and the things that are going to be happening this week, um, that there will just be a lot of peace, a lot of patience around this time, and that we as the church, as a community of believers, would be at the forefront of showing peace and love and grace as Christ has done so for us. So would you pray with me this morning? Um, Lord, we humbly come before you this morning. Lord, recognizing that we are sinful people in need of a Savior, in need of you. And God, there is no person alive today that can claim that they have a right to your inheritance, that they have a right to good standing with you based solely on their merit. Lord, we are all sinful. We all fall short. We are all in need of Christ's blood to cover us, Lord. Lord, will we not forget this reality? But we also not forget that you so graciously sent your son, Christ Jesus, to come to pay that sacrifice for us, Lord, so that all might come to you, all might be redeemed, all might break free from the chains of sin and death, that may all come to you, Lord. And we pray that over our nation. Lord, we pray that you would bring restoration that you'd bring healing. God, and in the things that are going to be happening this week, the changing of powers and a lot of tension that's going to arise and has already arisen because of it, God, would you give us courage as the church to be a message of of hope, a message of, of restoration, and a message of love for all peoples, God, because... That is what you have done for us, God. Christ was that message for us and is that message for us. And you have called us to live as he lived. And Lord, we need your help to be able to do that. So Lord, would our mindset not be on seeking to promote our own individual personal opinions and beliefs and and plans, God, but instead to surrender to your will. Lord, we are so grateful for you. Thank you for loving us far more than we could love ourselves and love you, God. It's your name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, Nathan. If you want to stand with us as we continue our worship this morning, um, I was I was thinking this week about how we don't get to we don't get to gather as big as we used to. Um, A lot of places aren't gathering, and we're doing the online thing. but the word is, is clear about just how good church is for us. Um, that it's something that we're not here to, to, to get anything one and done, set it and forget it. Um, that we're here because we do forget and because we're, we're people that need each other. Um, and it reminds me of that joke where it, it ends in, you idiot, I sent you three ships. Like God is with us. But we also, he gave us each other. He gave us the church. He built it uh, strategically so that we can love one another, sharpen each other, um, and be there for one another. So let's lift up his name this morning. Bless.
small 
as it should be, God, but we, we love you so much for loving us, for seeing us as righteous in your eyes, God. I pray that we would, um, that we would have our hearts and minds open this morning, that they would be undistracted, um, yeah, and that we would just make uh, much of you this week and as we listen to your word this morning. Amen. Can I have a seat? Uh, the scripture reading this morning is coming from John 13, 34 through 35. It says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Good morning. All right, so I got my hat off, so you know it's serious now. <clears throat> yeah, if you've ever seen the movie Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone, and you know, and if you haven't seen it, please don't, I mean, but if he turns his hat around, I mean, you know, like, that's the moment. The music comes up, and, and he's just going to dominate. So when I take my hat off when I preach, which is like the only time, like, I probably fall asleep in my hat, and that just means it's time for business. I just want the anointing of God just to, to use me for you guys. I, I just really want to serve you guys well, so... Did everyone here have a good night's sleep? No? A little bit? That's Well, you did better than me. I, I do not sleep well. I go to bed way after I should go to bed. And I think a lot of that is rebellion. Because I remember being a child and having a bedtime. And so I think as an adult, and yeah, I'm 43, 44, I just know I don't have a bedtime. I'm going to stay up as late as I want. But I do remember a time when I did have a bedtime, and that bedtime was 9 o'clock. I was a child in grade school, and I had a built-in alarm so that I never lost track of time, and my alarm was actually a TV show theme song that my parents would watch, and once I heard that theme song, I knew that it was time to go to bed. And it's a great theme song, so let me just, these are the words I would hear, and if you know the words, please feel free to sing along, but they went... Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and everyone is glad you came. And it's a great theme song, but it was my bedtime and to be honest, I was okay with that because my parents didn't realize this was a great strategy. If you want your kids to go to bed, play the most boring show ever created. <laughs> and it, it was boring to me. If you've seen it, and it's a great show, by the way, um, it's just people getting together and talking. That's all it is. So as a child, I'm thinking, I, I don't care if anybody knows my name. I'm in school. Everybody knows my name. Like, the teacher yells my name all day long. There's no confusion here. But then something happened. I became an adult. And now I totally want to go somewhere where everybody knows my name. I want to go somewhere where everybody's glad that I'm there. Don't we all want that this morning? Doesn't that actually sound awesome? After all, we were made to live in community. We live in a country built on community. The history of our country is based on people knowing each other, barbecuing together, knowing your neighbor's name, playing baseball together, fighting wars together. And even after like political elections, people would still come back together. I mean, worst case scenario, you may have heard, you know, oh, you don't talk about politics. And that was just to preserve the community. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It's like, hey, let's not jeopardize this. So it's gone and passed. Let's move on. And it was great. But then again, something happened, and we realized it's not that way anymore because before we knew it, we saw something, or we didn't see it because it was so slow. We didn't see what was happening, and by the time we did, things were moving so fast, we couldn't stop it. And that was we traded our communities for networks. We became avatars, which look a lot better than what we actually look like. Our kids stopped coming outside to play. We stopped communi communicating with each other. Our neighbors became strangers. 
We lost the ability to communicate and therefore the foundation of what makes a great community. The consequences of this are loneliness, depression, and hate, to name a few. And this was before COVID, right? And now any hope we had at community of connecting with each other has just been shut down, literally shut down. We can't even see each other's faces. And this morning, just hear me, I am not talking politics or conspiracy whatsoever. I'm just talking about people. You know, since COVID started, 53% of adults have said they have some sort of mental issue. Because of COVID, whether it's depression or stress, anxiety, it's affecting half, over half of our population. 10% of our population has thoughts of suicide. Suicide rates are at 150%, and it's probably higher than that. We just don't have all the data yet. 13% of people who never used substances, never drank, never did drugs, have started just because of COVID, just to cope with this. But the good news, I mean, thankfully, is that we have the safety of social media. Right? I mean, this media that emerged with the promise of connecting us all, of making the world a smaller place, and it did for a while. I mean, it really did. It was fun. When, when MySpace came out, we started hunting down everybody we knew just to make sure they weren't doing better than us. You know, and I, I bet a lot of us are guilty of taking MySpace pictures, right, with your camera kind of up here-ish. We, we all, I mean, that exists now forever. But then again, something happened. At some point, we realized that communicating online was not like communicating face-to-face. We realized that behind a keyboard that we could just burn our civility. We don't have to honor anybody that we talk to. Our words have become weapons. This community that we lost, this real-life community that we gave up for something else, has become worse. It's become a digital dystopia. It's a wasteland where all of our words and images have been used for war. We have been told that we need to hate, we need division, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. It's just, it's manufactured. Why have we accepted that? Why have we allowed people to tell us that we can't have an opposing view without hating the person we're talking to? Why have we allowed ourselves to be told that we can't hear other views without being offended by them? To be honest, online, it's actually safer if people don't know your name. So, yes, I've depressed us all. Good job, James. But my point here is just just to say that we have a need. That we have a need and a desire to connect an authentic community. And we will see this morning in the Holy Word of God in our Bible, that Jesus knew we had this need as well. And he's going to be our example of how we can get that back this morning, how we can create that community that both he and we desire. Today we're going to continue our series about our vision, mission, and core convictions by looking at our second core conviction. Connect with one another authentically. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, uh, may our service here this morning uh, be a worship to you, uh, an incense that you smell this morning, Lord, Lord, just Calvary Wellspring, just worshiping you with with our songs, with our studying of your holy word, and we ask, Lord, uh, you who lives in perfect community in the Trinity, Lord, to open up our hearts and minds and to just Give us the ability, Lord, to lean into the awkward, to embrace community here authentically and what that looks like, Lord. And we thank you that through Christ, we are a community, Lord. It's just a matter of actually connecting, Lord. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text today is going to be John 13, 34, and 35. John 13, 34, and 35. And it says this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, 
if you have love for one another. And so what I want to look at here is this is Jesus talking. I really want to look at three ways that Jesus is going to lead us into how to connect with one another authentically. And the first thing I want to look at is Jesus as our commander. Again, let's start with his words. Now, now mind you, these words that are being written down right here aren't being screamed at the mountaintops. This isn't Jesus talking to thousands of people from a boat. This isn't people like following him. This is an intimate conversation with the people closest to him. And he's looking into their eyes. These people that are going to bear his name are going to bear witness about Jesus. And we know that just before verses 34 and 35, that Jesus is telling them, guys, I'm about to be betrayed. It's about to go down right now. So you need to listen to the words that I have for you guys. And so he looks them in the eyes and says this, a new commandment I give to you. You love one another as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. That's pretty heavy. You see, connecting with one another authentically isn't only the desire of Jesus for us. It's a command this morning. It's commanded that we connect. So I hope, if nothing else, that we understand that this is not optional, that our Savior, our Shepherd is saying, you guys need to love one another. The second, Jesus as an example of authentic love. Now, if you look up the word authentic on Google, it says, of undisputed origin or genuine. Uh, in Miriam Webster, there's three definitions, and I love the way dictionaries say things. It's, it's just so great. Worthy of acceptance or belief as conforming to or based on fact. Conforming to an original so as to reproduce essential features made or done the same way as the original. And I think you get the picture. Like authentic means like the legit. This is real. Authentic love is real love at its heart. And that's what Jesus is commanding here, authentic love. And he says literally right here, just in case you guys are not sure what authentic means, they didn't have Google or Miriam, if you guys don't understand what the expectation is, the love I expect for one another is the love that I've shown you guys for the last three years. That is hard. You know, it was Jesus himself who said two chapters later in John 15, 13, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends, which is exactly what he did for them and for us. Jesus not only gave us the command to love one another, but he gave us the perfect example of how to love one another. Jesus as the connection. When we consider what it means to connect and to connect authentically, we need to realize that Jesus is the piece that connects all of us together. I know talking about puzzles, that really doesn't make sense that one piece can connect every piece, but in here, it, it makes absolute sense. We read this in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place of God by the Spirit. So just thinking about the metaphor that we use here at Calvary of connecting like puzzle pieces. And if you've seen our logos or our websites, you will, you will see the puzzle pieces on there. And I think it's a great metaphor because so often when people try to connect with other people socially and they're building their social structure, they do it in the same way that, that we create puzzles. And it, it really makes sense. Start with the most agreeable pieces first, right? Get the easy pieces, get the corners, get the outside. And that's a great tried and true strategy to make a puzzle, but not to be in a community. Because what happens when you just find the people who are so easy to agree with you is the first thing you do is just block everybody else out. And then if you build any more, you're just building more inward. 
so you don't get to grow or connect with other people. In contrast with Christ, he is the centerpiece from which we grow out of. What's being built doesn't have edges or corners or borders. From Christ, we are connected to Christ, we are connecting other people to Christ, and we are growing. We are breaking down borders, we're breaking down walls to connect people to Christ. It's a whole different way to live in community and connect. We need to connect with one another in order to love one another authentically. One another. You know, there are 59 one another verses just in the New Testament. 16 love one another's. The like New Testament is pretty small. 16 love one another's. Four encourage one another's. Many more, as you see on the board, be at peace with one another, live in harmony, honor, instruct, forgive, submit, bear with, do not lie to, admonish, build up, and do not slander one another. It's a lot of one another's. The disciples of Jesus are a community like no other because we love one another. It's different. Yet in order to love one another, we must connect authentically. We can't just show up and say, I love you authentically. No, we got to connect first and really lean into it so that we can love one another. Now, just as a qualifier here, I do want to mention the fact, as Jesus says here, if you are a disciple, you are known by loving one another, which means when you were saved, you were saved into a community. You were not saved to be by yourself. You cannot love one another if it's just you. If you see, just like, let me take this out, the puzzle pieces you have, if you see a puzzle piece, you don't look at that and think, yeah, that's it, man, I could totally see that. Makes sense. No, it doesn't, it looks horrible. And you know, like this this is not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to create something bigger. It's supposed to be part of something bigger, create a bigger picture and have a greater message. And so, as we think of ourselves, the fact that we're a puzzle piece, we know that it doesn't really work just to be a puzzle piece just by ourselves. And mind you, I do realize that some of you have been hurt by the church. It's horrible. I've been there. It's upsetting to me. It, I, I, I struggled yesterday trying to think of words to use. I can't. It upsets me so much to know that any of you were hurt by the church, that somebody should have been shepherding you and loving you hurt you. That is not right. And if you want to, I would love to hear that. I would love to walk with you through that. Any of us here, we, would, we want to walk with you through that. Let's get through this. We're so sorry that happened to you. One nice thing that we find in our Savior and our King Jesus is this is a person who can sympathize with that exact thing. One of his best friends betraying him with a kiss. Oh my gosh. You know, an entire people who he came to save murder him. And so yet we still have Jesus saying, in spite of knowing this was going to happen to him, still saying, love one another. This still has to take place. But what does it look like to connect? So we're going to look at four ways that Jesus shows us how to connect with one another authentically. Because he's, again, he is the example of what this looks like. So the first thing that Jesus shows us is we, if we want to connect with people is that we need to reach out. Jesus didn't stick to like his inner circle. The disciples weren't all just carpenters or religious people, right? We see in Matthew 4, 18 and 20, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. The disciples of Jesus come from every profession and nation, ethnicity, you name it. I mean, it, it's diverse. And just like Christ, that means we need to reach out of our comfort zones. At Calvary Inglewood, one thing we always used to say was lean into the awkward. If you're part of my gospel community, you know, I say, hey, lean into the awkward. Let's just name it. It's awkward. Nobody 
looks at a person like me and says, yeah, that's a guy I want to have a meal with. It's awkward, but, but we need to lean into that. I mean, just consider the, the awkwardness of the puzzle piece. If you ever try to connect it with other pieces, it's a mess before anything. It gets messier first, and you don't know where to fit in. Connecting authentically means reaching out. Again, looking at a puzzle piece, almost every side has a part of it that sticks out, right? If you're going to connect, you have to stick yourself out there. There has to be a part of you that you're willing to stick out to connect with other people. Now, as Nathan mentioned, here we want you to reach out and use the cards. And th this is a way that you can connect with us because we're going to talk about several different ways that you can serve here at Calvary Wellspring. And the only reason that way we're going to get to know your name, to know who you are, to figure out where you could fit in here is if you communicate with us. So you really need to do the most awkward thing ever and just grab one of these cards, fill it out, and just let us know. Take that first step. We all know what it's like to, to be on the outside or to be scared to take that first step. I, I so want to know you guys better. I really do. So the second thing that Jesus did as a great example is he opened up. So he reached out and he opened up. A lot of people don't realize how much Jesus opened himself up to people. He's God. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to expose himself at all. And yet as you see people follow him, you see people at a distance who are following him possibly for miracles, for food, but they're not getting all of Jesus opening up. And you can see the closer people get to Jesus, that Jesus just opens up in ways that it's kind of mind-blowing. Like Jesus is, is, you know, as where he's giving the parables to the masses, the closer you get to him, he's giving like, oh yeah, and here's what that means. They didn't even ask me, but I'm going to tell you what this parable means. That's awesome. Or future events. Hey guys, this is about to happen. This is the guy who's about to do it, and this is what you guys are about to do. And so the closer you are to Jesus, Jesus is just giving out information, opening himself up, being vulnerable. Hey guys, guess what? Raise your hand if, if you're about to be betrayed. Right? It's just so vulnerable with sharing himself and everything he was going through. We could see this in Matthew 26, 36 through 38 with his really inner core of disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled, and he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, this is something the disciples never forgot and that they shared with everybody. Not that Jesus was nervous. It wasn't like, oh, hey, look how scared Jesus was. It's like, look how humble. Look how much of himself he was willing to open up, even as God, and say, hey, I need you guys. I'm stressed out here. I'm, I, would you guys please do this with me? And so we need to be the same way if we want to connect. We need to open ourselves up. Again, as we look at the puzzle piece, you know, there's that side on it, or just about every side that has like a scoop taken out, right? And that's so you can let people in. You do not have to do this life together. It's stressful to do this life together. And so not only should we be reaching out, but we need to be opening ourselves up to accept help from others, and to be vulnerable. Now, one way that we do that here at Calvary is through something called DNA groups. And these are small discipleship groups, like two or three people, um, either men or women, not mixed. And we open up. We open up the Bible, and we dig deep into it. We open up our hearts and dig deep into our sin with each other. And we are vulnerable. And then we go to Jesus together. Now, if you have never been discipled, and if this sounds intense, it is so intense, but it's so great. It's so great to not to have to do this alone. It is great to have somebody to have accountability with. It's great to have somebody ask you, how is your heart? 
and mean it. And so over the next couple of months, we're going to be starting this back up again. We'll have sign-up sheets, and if you need to reach out to us with the card or email us, however you can communicate with us, just lean into the awkward, and we would love to get you into one of these DNA groups. The next way is to share a meal. And like Jesus knew, we all know. Food is awesome. People connect over food. You guys want to do a business deal? You have a power lunch, right? You want to date somebody? Dinner and dancing, dinner and a movie, but there has to be dinner, right? There has to be the food element. The best family time to communicate with your family around the dinner table when you're all facing each other. The best holiday, Thanksgiving, because food, yeah, it's not debatable. (laughs) There are numerous times throughout the Gospels where it just shows Jesus, and without realizing it, there's food close by, turning water into wine, taking fish and bread and making it into tons of fish and bread. Oh, we need fish? Here, let's catch a million, guys, and then let's go, we'll go cook them and eat and, and study scripture together. And so there's just something great about connecting over food. Of course, the most famous food scene is the Last Supper, as we see in Luke 2.14. And when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And I love this verse, especially because it talks about the fact he's reclining. This is one more time to hang out with the boys. He's just saying, guys, I want to do this one more meal with you guys. I really want this last meal. Not only that, from now on, I want you guys to not stop having meals, continue to have meals together, but then do this one thing in remembrance of me. Because guess what? I'm not going to be here anymore because I'm going to go do something for you guys. And you guys are going to remember it. And there's so, so much importance in that meal, getting together and just remembering who Christ is and what he did for us. It's just, it was the perfect thing to do. So the way here at Calvary Wellspring that we have um, share a meal is through gospel communities. Oh man, I could have a whole sermon on gospel communities. Uh, The best relationships I've had in my life from, you know, people I met six, seven years ago that I still talk to, I met in gospel communities. If you've been in a gospel community, you know this is the way you connect. In fact, if you connect different ways here at Calvary, do gospel communities also, because this is huge. This is important. Usually, um, barring COVID restrictions, we have a meal first, and it's potluck style. So you only have to do like one part of the meal. Everybody comes together, and there's so often just amazing themes like Italian, Mexican, uh, finger foods, stadium foods, or foods that begin with a certain letter. It's a lot of fun, and it's super tasty. And then after that, we get to dig into the Bible together, or or another theology book, something. So we are digging into God's Word together, and we are growing together, not just in our stomachs, but in our spirituality. And it is an absolute wonderful time. And I know for me, I don't want to hear myself talk all the time. I mean, maybe you're right there right now. I don't want to hear myself talk all the time. I want to hear you guys. You guys are disciples. You guys know God. You guys have wisdom that I need. You guys have amazing questions. And in gospel communities, we have a space where you can talk about whatever you want, and we can question things together, and we can answer things together. So I can't encourage that enough. Now, gospel communities here will be starting back up in February. So we will be giving, again, sign-ups in our announcements as, like a couple weeks before. You're going to hear it every week. They're coming up. They're coming up. And please, if you are not part of one, become part of one. You know, again, looking at the puzzle piece, usually there's four sides. Sometimes there's puzzle pieces that have more sides. I don't do those. I don't think it's right. I think it's too many. <clears throat> but a gospel community you can connect with every side at once. You can connect with so many people at the same time. And if that sounds terrifying and awkward, lean into it. Lean into it. 
Now, the last way that we see in Jesus, the way he kind of showed us how to connect with one another authentically is through serving in ministry together, which um, is the yellow card that we talked about earlier. And just now that I'm seeing a yellow card, I'm remembering, it's not part of the slides, but on Sunday afternoons, we actually, a lot of people here get together to play soccer. And so if you want to get together and play soccer, you can't catch the skeletons, they're too fast. But yeah, it's a great way to connect. And you could talk to so many people here, you know, even Kevin or anybody about what that looks like just to play soccer together, because yellow card. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, Jesus spent his entire ministry connecting with the disciples, training them hands-on, talking them through everything, not just training them, but showing them how to do it. It's like, here's how you do it, guys. Hey, let's do it together. You know, so when he left, they could do it by themselves. It's pretty insane. The disciples were not spectators to how awesome Jesus was. I mean, they were, but that wasn't it. They weren't fans cheering on Jesus. I mean, Jesus is saying, guys, let's do this together. Even though I'm God and I could just do it with a snap of the fingers, dude, we're going to do it together. I mean, it's just like, I don't know if anybody else has this fantasy, but like, especially when I watch hockey, you just like, imagine if you were at the game looking down there and the coach or our player on the ice is just like, hey, come down, we need you. We need you, right? Come play with us. And yet that's what Jesus did. It's like, hey guys, this, the best, most amazing thing that's ever happened in the history of this universe I created, you're going to do it with me. We're going to do it together. So what does that look like here at Calvary Wellspring? A great place to start is Sunday morning. We have so many things that people do here that nobody gets any praise for, any credit for. I feel like I have, when I preach, I think I have the easiest job here on a Sunday morning. I don't come and open this place. I don't turn on the lights. I don't organize anything. There's people running sound and slides and cleaning up, setting up, and all I have to do is just show up and talk. I have the easiest job here. I mean, there's somebody who's literally, like, allowing me to talk and, and moving the slides for me. I don't make my own slides. That's my wife. You know, and Jessica, you know, and Carrie are always trying to figure out what I'm saying and, and hoping that I stay true to what I said I was going to do. You know, we have Barry and Nick and Sean who do the sound faithfully every week. Like every week, though. And we really do need help, especially in a time of COVID where if one of us gets sick, you know, we're near each other, we need people to be able to step in. And so I know they would have no problem. I know if you want to connect with somebody and serve here, they would love to teach you. It is such a blessing to them to give them one week off where they could just sit and worship without thinking about, you know, the mic breaking or popping sounds and... <clears throat> The other thing is I often hear people tell me, James, how do I connect? Like, how, if I, if I really, okay, I want to lean into the awkward, I'm down, let's do it. How do I really connect and serve in ministry? And I think another two great ways is to do children's ministry or to do greeting. So children's ministry is huge. Not only do you provide a ministry to couples who sometimes this is the only time during the week where they're going to be by themselves, and you allow them to worship God together, that's a blessing to them. And that's a connection point right there. Being able to teach kids the gospel, preparing their hearts and mind to adore Jesus, that's awesome. But here, let me tell you this, a little insider secret. As somebody who's horrible with names, I, I, I don't understand why I'm so bad with names. All the kids have name tags. So... <clears throat> Which is good, because you can learn the kids' names, but you learn the last names, right? And in order for the kids to be picked up, their parents have to pick them up. So right off the bat, you are learning everybody's name. You are connecting with families in the church. And I've done this before. I know one day we had like over 20 kids in my group, and I said, hey guys, let's play a game. Does anybody know their mom and dad's real name? And so, and yeah, it's like, oh, it's, oh, I, I know, you know, and I'm just writing down because it's just homework for me, like, you know, and 
And then afterwards, I said, hey, but you guys can't call them. You guys call them mom and dad, but it is good to know their real names. But you could just, yeah, use that situation to learn people's names. Now, as far as children's go, uh, we haven't had children's ministry in a long time because of COVID. Um, I do know some Calvary churches are starting to. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping and praying that soon we will we'll be able to provide that again. And we have sent off some big families to the ministry field or to other church plants. So the children's groups down there are not huge. So, I mean, talk about a great time to come and volunteer in children's ministry. Like, this is the time to do it. And then greeting. You know, so often, and I apologize if you've come here on a Sunday morning and there's been nobody outside to greet you. You know, I know Jen and Celeste are are often out in the front right there. But there's a lot of times where we're trying to figure out how to get the mic working. We're trying to figure out how many people are showing up, who signed up, who's doing what. And we just get done just before service, so we don't have time to go out there and greet. And it's a great ministry. It's literally ministry where the, the whole point of it is to connect with people. To tell them, good morning, how was your week? You know, what's your name again? And then tell them, hey, have a great week. And so the whole point of it is just connecting with people. So if you really want to just connect with people, that is just a great opportunity and built-in way to do that. You know, as we connect through serving in ministry, you know, as puzzle pieces on Sunday morning, we do it together. And we don't see it often, but from God's perspective, looking down on us, he sees how we're pieced together. He sees the bigger picture that we're painting here in Aurora, and it's pleasing to him. Like, again, this, we were commanded to connect. So this morning, you know, from God's point of view, we've connected together. That is a success. That is a worship to God. We need to learn how to love one another like Jesus loved us. Leaning into the awkward and connecting authentically. Like, let's really do this. Let's connect. Build up this body, but also show the rest of the world because there's a whole other point to this. And that is, it supports our vision and mission, right? Because that's what all this is about. If you remember our vision and mission, it's we exist to make Jesus non-ignorable in Aurora and to the ends of the earth. We desire to make make joyful, passionate disciples of Jesus all to the glory of God. Again, let's go back to John 13, 34, 35, because we'll see how this ties together to our vision and mission. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And here's how it it supports our vision and mission. By all this, people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. By this, all people will know. Remember I depressed us really bad to start the sermon? So yeah, there's people out there who are depressed, hostile, lonely, angry, disconnected. And yet when we connect with each other like we're supposed to authentically, we give them hope. We show them that through Christ, we have a community where people can connect here, people of different political views, people who root for different sports teams. We can still all connect. When we connect authentically, people will know. Even Christians, you know, and non-Christians We have this unique thing that we do here. This is our testimony. This is how we make Jesus non-ignorable, by showing people how his disciples love each other. How do you guys love each other like that? It's not us, it's Jesus. And yes, it's authentic. The way we live in community with each other should be compelling to everybody outside. People should want to join this group, even if they don't know who Jesus is yet. It's like, what are you guys doing? This is awesome. Invite them in and then just show them who Jesus is. Make Jesus non-ignorable. Show them what it looks like to be a joyful, passionate disciple of Jesus. Because there's nothing else in the world that is more joyful. And so we support this by showing people, like, why are these guys so crazy happy during COVID? Why are these people so happy when the Broncos are horrible? Because we have Jesus. There are people in this city who have been locked inside for nearly a year. And maybe if and when this ends, it'll probably be more than a year since people have got out and actually connected with people. 
So let this be a place where people know that they can come and connect, a safe a community where people can experience the love of Jesus through the love that we have for one another. So really, there's only one mystery left this morning. And that is you all have a puzzle piece, right? <clears throat> what does this piece belong to? Does it actually belong to a puzzle? Yes, it does. So the, the puzzle this belongs to is a painting called Cafe Terrace at Night. There we go. And it's a beautiful painting. The person who painted this wanted to preach the gospel. He wanted everybody to hear the gospel. His father was a pastor as well. And this is a very religious painting. And if you could tell by the sky, the starry night, the first time he actually painted the starry night, this is Vincent van Gogh. Now I think this painting sums up everything that we've talked about this morning. Here we have this dark, jaggedy city with just ripped up like bumpy stone streets, and yet there's this one area that's warm and it's bright, and people are sharing a meal together. There's a window with the cross beams that form a cross. There's a figure in white with long hair who sticks out. Oh, and there's 12 people that are just leaning in close to him. And there's one, of course, that's in the shadow about to betray him. This is a reference to the Last Supper. And what I love about this painting, though, is that it takes, it's not looking just at the table, but the fact there's still more tables. And if you are not connected here at Calvary Wellspring, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not going to wag my finger in your face. I'm just, let me encourage you to come in and connect. There's a lot of tables in here to share a meal with us, to connect with us. Don't be like the people who are passing by on the street in the darkness, who can hear and see what's going on and aren't participating. So lean in and connect. And for those of us who are disciples of Jesus, let, let us not take this for granted. The fact that we have this, the fact we have this beautiful relationship, but let's go out into that jagged city, let's go down the dark streets and invite people in because there's still a whole lot of tables for people to be disciples of Jesus. Now, I put the puzzle pieces in the bag because of COVID, so we didn't touch them, but I, I encourage you to hang on to those. I'm going to use mine as a bookmark, and just when you see it, just remember that you need connection. Don't just be the puzzle piece by itself. You need to connect with other people. Other people need you to connect with them. And there's a whole city of Aurora and to the ends of the earth who need to be connected in Christ. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that in a dark, frustrating world that Jesus is our light and our <clears throat> shepherd and friend and king and that we've been invited to the table by your grace, Lord, to have communion with you and commanded by you to have communion with each other and to have community. And Lord, I just ask, and I, oh, I thank you, Lord, for everyone who's here and for everybody online, that we would not lose connection, even if we're not able to attend Sunday morning, that we would never lose connection with each other and that our connections would even grow stronger and more authentic and that through making Jesus non-ignorable and making more disciples that we would connect others to you as well because there's a lot of pieces here in bags this morning, Lord, that are people out in their homes who are depressed and disconnected, Lord, and just bring these people to us and connect them to this. Connect, connect them to you, Lord Jesus. We ask these things in your name, Lord. Amen. So now we're going to transition to our time of communion. And we did talk about the Lord's Supper earlier, which is where this is introduced. So as you come take this, just remember why we're doing this. Like the reason Jesus said to do this, you know, part of it was doing it together. Like it wasn't just what it represents, like Jesus' betrayal and his death to us. But he also said, hey, when you guys do this, do this together. Because remember, I didn't do this for the one solo puzzle piece. I did this to connect everybody. My body was broken and disconnected so that you can all be connected 
in my body and by my blood. So take a moment and come up when you're ready. And if you are not a Christian here this morning, uh, please don't take this. Um, just pray about it, about what it means to, about who Jesus is, about what community is and what kind of community you want to be a part of and, and talk to somebody. You could even talk to me about what that looks like. out this morning um, with a new song, new to us, a little bit old, but um, it's, a, it's a simple song, um, and it's one of those worshipful songs that just kind of keeps repeating, and I like to dwell in it. I like worship songs that allow us to do that, so uh, as you finish up, uh, if you want to stand and sing with us. Your love is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested A covenant double And your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercy for today As faithful you have been Faithful you will be Pledge yourself to me And that's why I sing Your praise will Ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will Ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will Ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will Ever be on my lips You father the orphan Your kindness makes us whole And you shoulder our weakness Your strength becomes our own And you're making me like you Clothing me in white Bringing beauty from ashes you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame known by her true name and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will 
ever be on my list You will be praised You will be praised With angels and saints we sing worthy are you Lord You will be praised You will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord you will be praised you will be praised No praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Calvary Wellspring, it is a joy to worship with you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Our benediction, uh, if you don't know, we close every, every gathering with a benediction. And basically a benediction is just a sending out. Uh, Erica and I had the opportunity over our sabbatical to go to several churches. And um, a couple of them, the way that they, they actually did their benediction is at the very end, they said, you are sent. I think that's a great way to think about what a benediction is. Um, and so as I read this, uh, we're not going to, it's not a prayer, so we don't need to close our eyes, but I'm just going to read a little bit out of 1 John, um, and then we will we'll do the sending out from there. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God ab abides in us and his love is perfected in us. And so this week, as we go out, from the church into the world, into the rest of our lives, all the places that we go. May we radically seek to show people who our, our Lord and Savior is through the way that we love, love the others. You guys have a great week. We'll see you here next week.